Hi everyone, we're here from TEDx Singapore Studios, talking today to Don Ko, industrial designer, co-founder of the studio known as Stuck, and also a lecturer at NUS. Hi, Hi Don. Man. Hey, uh, good to be here. So, really good to have you here today. One of the interesting projects that you've done is something called the Lift Button Project, and I think that that came out of the concept of people having to touch things, which of course became pretty much anathema in during COVID, what inspired you to do the lift button project and what that's all about? One of the uh, things that we were challenging ourselves to think about was um, some, you know, when the moment you go into uh, don't touch things, um, it's very quick for us to do sensors and, uh, uh, you know, uh, distance sensing uh, devices that completely take away your sense of tactility, right? Um, so now, you know, lift buttons, it's, it's been happening, right? Uh, you put your hand near and then it buzzes and then you can kind of like activate the button. But uh, there is something about human beings and needing to feel <laughs> the button move, right, that we, we thought was lost. I mean, this seems a bit myopic, almost like a designer talking about something that's not so important to people. But on many levels, I would say uh, the, the reaction, or maybe a, a bit of a design overreaction, right, to say, hey, what if even at a distance, the button yields to our movement, right? without touching it. Um, would that make something interesting? Now, the, the lift button itself, uh, to me, to be very honest as a designer, is slightly superfluous as a solution, right? Because lift buttons uh, and pressing them are not such an important thing in our lives. <laughs> you know, uh, they, 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 to kind of feel the tactility. But, but then, it opens the question to say, could we do things with um, less uh, yielding to that pandemic? Uh, could we kind of like have some kind of uh, more delightful response? Now, a parallel example that may make more sense um, in this space is a project that I recently guided in NUS, um, where we had a bunch of students uh, rethink how do you do a hand sanitizer, especially if you do a hand sanitizer with uh, children. And we've had them basically say, if the sanitizer was such a, a mundane action of pressing it, and if you look everywhere, they spill all over the ground, right? Um, uh, this, this bunch of uh, students, they uh, said, what if we brought more feel into these things? And they spent time trying to figure out how do you make sanitizer solutions bubble, right? And so what they created was like a bubble machine which uh, releases the sanitizing liquid in in happy form, right? So children children went crazy when they tested it because you could just kind of like just put over and the bubbles came up. Uh, now, that may be less superfluous than than a lift button because in some in some instances, I don't know whether in schools, perhaps if you want to cultivate a habit, right, of say sanitize your hand, right, maybe it's, it's good to bring in some fun. Okay, let's move on to another project. Um, another one that you've been involved in is called the sliding door. Okay. Tell us a little bit about that. You see, the, the lift button project um, <laughs> opened up this paradigm for us right. of uh, things that move in sync with your body at a distance, right? And um, the sliding door, well, the lift button is a better carrier of the message at this point in time because people are sensitive to touching, you know, and that's where the public spaces are. The sliding door um, being a, a more efficient format because you only need one sensor and only one thing is moving, right? Instead of like 32 buttons would be, in my mind, a better place to use this um, concept of kinetic touchless. The whole kinetic touchless uh, type of concept was um, basically coming out from you feeling like you're Darth Vader, you know? <laughs> right? Right. And, you know okay. the, the ability to kind of like uh, lock onto something at a distance and then it follows you, even though you're not touching it. So the sliding door is just that. When you get close enough, right. it latches to your hand's position right. and you can just open as much as you want, release it, it goes back again. It's a, it's, for me, very interesting because if we talk about malls um, which try to be eco-friendly and they install the doors that keep closing and you have to tap the button to, to yeah. have it open. Sure. Uh, when you tap it, it opens fully, right? right. <laughs> and, and it just stays there for a while to let you go. But um, here, when you link it to your hand, you can just open as much as you need to go through and just walk through and it goes back. So, so that's, that's, for me, has some gains with regards to the efficiency. If we go back to the idea that we use our resources properly. Um, we always have to ask the question that it endures. Right? Also, you just don't want to be, um, you know, 
many years down the road, your grandchildren asking you, why did you do that? You know? <laughs> yeah, that makes no sure. sense now. Uh, that, that, that's, I think, uh, something that uh, yeah, we, we, we tend to look at okay. often. Yeah. Um, you've actually been credited with a number of award-winning designs. So great, congratulations, it's really good. Um, what do you think is the one design that you're most proud of? Oh, I'm certainly most proud of uh, the Arc Touch mouse that the Arc uh, Touch mouse. Microsoft came and uh, tasked them with the challenge to do this. Uh, I guess for me, uh, that Singapore education where we are a little bit, you know, um, hmm. uh, broad based, especially in the earlier years of your schooling, got me to connect design and the problem at hand with a simple phenomenon of uh, thermostats. There's the bimetallic strip in there that bends with yep. temperature, right? So that clicked and I just thought we could make a bending mechanism from such principles. Uh, I made it, um, <laughs> I went to build it and I just gave it to the boss and I think they were a little bit stunned by how it worked. Um, and so that's where it began. Um, I, yeah, so for me it was like, yeah, it's a nice, it's, it's kind of a nice uh, little milestone for me. There must be so many things in terms of design, in terms of design thinking. There's the American school, the European school, you know, the Far Eastern school, the Japanese school. When you think of certain designs, what gives you that inspiration where you stop and you go, wow, you know, that is impressive? I think the one defining thing that uh, I'm most inspired by usually is when somebody takes away something and it performs better than if okay. you try to add something. So the reductionist type reductionist. of approach. Um, the object that always comes to mind, and I talk about quite a bit, um, is the balance bike. Right? I'm not sure if you've... Uh, the balance bike. Balance bike, you know, like the children's bicycles okay. where, you know, there's no pedals, right? They, uh, and I've, I was just stunned seeing my kids um, take to it, and then all of them learn to ride a two-wheel bicycle faster than any other kids that I know of, right? In fact, they, they don't even have to be trained. So for me, that's a, a, a great example because you know, you can say, let's teach a kid to learn a bike. Let's hold it, let's add yep. wheels to it, right? Outrageous, and someone yeah. just says, let's take away the pedal, right? And then the kid is now running on his legs, but the, when he gets a certain momentum, it balances by itself. The right. kid never ever kind of deals with, you know, things that support him. And my daughter, she was uh, there after having used the balance bike for, for, for like a few months on our, on our own. Uh, she, she was like say, let me try the pedal bike the two-wheel pedal bike, got 15 it, minutes yeah. she got on it, she's riding around the shop herself. We, we didn't have to teach her how to ride the bike. So that was, for me, like a, you know, a really brilliant type of uh, solution, which is um, aligned with the clever use of resources. In fact, it reduces the use of resources to solve the problem. Do you apply that when you're in your designs, is that you try and take out Yes, as much all as the you time. possibly can. Um, okay. It's a bit like a uh, it's a bit like a mantra. We we go through okay. all the process and we always ask ourselves, okay, now can we take off something? You know, can we do this with five dollars instead of fifty dollars? Right? It's not that it's literally that reduction, but um, it causes us to just oh, maybe it's time to 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 think of the other way around instead of uh, yeah. Everybody has the ability to learn creativity. How so? Well, creativity fundamentally is about improving things, right? And I think. Okay. Um, everyone in big and small ways are improving things in their lives. The challenge is this, the challenge is how do you cultivate a healthy discontent, right? A healthy so, discontent? Yes. Okay. I mean, tell us more. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm all for a contented outlook towards life, right? But, oh, okay. But in terms of improving things, um, we need to cultivate... Challenging the status quo. Yeah, we need to cultivate a certain kind of healthy discontent so that we are able to see the gaps. And the moment that you can see the gap, you know, a human being is usually able to kind of say, oh, how do we kind of close that gap? Right. Most of the time, we are either conditioned to numb ourselves uh, from seeing that gap or uh, we, we need some frameworks to help ourselves to think that way. Um, but as, as a designer operating for, you know, some years, we've trained ourselves on certain signals that we always use. Mm -hmm. um, so at any one time, we can always see an object and know how to improve it in some aspect for human beings. Now, I think a lot of people can do that for many things in, in, in even at work uh, or their home. Right. It generates for me actually another question though, which is, isn't what you're talking about also around attitude versus aptitude? I always found that somebody has to have a certain level of aptitude to be able to do something, which is why I asked you about being teachable, but also you've got to have the right attitude to be able to apply that. Would, would you agree or what yes, would your totally thoughts agree. be on that? Um, in fact, 
uh, you need both. And um, seeing, seeing in uh, education even, um, there, there will be uh, ones who have a lot of aptitude, mm. like, so a stronger inclination in this space, but you still kind of need to work it to unwrap that gift of the talent right. that you have. You know, it's, you know, it's somehow the way we are given gifts, we, we, it's not just like, oh, you're just brilliant right from the start. Right? Even if you have the inclinations too, you have to work at it. Yep. Now, then True. there are others who maybe have less uh, aptitude, right, naturally. Um, they can gain a very good stretch, right, to, uh, through just attitude. Um, but uh, in the same spirit of utilizing resources for their maximum uh, potential, um, we see designers and students this way too, meaning that let's put everyone in their best game space, you know, um, where their natural aptitudes are, let's maximize that. Um, and they are also happier, <laughs> you know, doing that. But, but this also engenders the next question of, this is not necessarily age specific, right? I mean, you could also have someone who decides to want to go into industrial design at a later age yes. and start to learn and suddenly they, they discover an unknown talent, right? Uh, yes, uh, in fact, uh, even at NUS, uh, we, right. we've had very interesting candidates who've, who are like in their 40s and 50s who decide after years of successful career elsewhere, they say, I just want to learn design now, you know? And they come in and it's like, oh, you are maybe 20 years older than me as your teacher. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, well. but, but, but really, uh, they surprise us and sometimes even more so because of the clarity that they come to this with. Uh, students, you know, from say, um, the younger age, they might come to say, oh, let me try out design. Mm -hmm. But this is someone who is like, I've done a lot. Um, now I want to look at design. So that, that clarity is quite, uh, quite uh, different. Um, in one of the articles um, that has been cited, you talked about this concept of imagining better possibilities. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Imagining better possibilities? Yes. I think it's relating to things like the healthy discontent. Um, mm -hmm. but we can imagine better possibilities in so many ways uh, that uh, could be really frivolous. And so I would prefer if we imagine in certain kinds of boxes that are productive. For example, we know that human beings always want to gravitate towards bonding, right? For example, we know that and it's, it doesn't change, right? We, okay. we need to be social creatures. Yep. Um, of course, there has two sides to it. The, the, the bond dynamic has like the need to be together and also the need to be apart. So if we, are, if we always bring to uh, everything that we do, this question, right. for example, as a lens, I think we suddenly can realize that there are a lot of things that we can improve, right? Like, um, how does a sitting layout like that between you and me or chairs um, create a better uh, conversational response, right? How, do, uh, you know, how does a backpack that you bring to school build friendships? Right. I think, yeah, yeah they, or maybe even help you to open conversations with another classmate, right? They, I mean, these are questions that we don't usually ask of uh, things that we, we um, uh, work on, right? But when you say possibilities, yeah, this, this is where we, we start to ask these questions. And, but of course, we, we don't ask the frivolous ones. We try to ask those that the human being will resonate with. Don Ko, co-founder of Stuck, industrial designer, lecturer. It's been a pleasure. I've learned a lot. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very it's much. It's been great.